Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to have this opportunity to talk to you about a truly remarkable derivation. This is a link of mathematics and theoretical physics. But the findings of our world being not one of three dimensions of space, length, breadth and height, and one moment in time, but actually having a mainly hidden reality in a finite world of nine dimensions, a nine dimensional spin, finite reality, and that's not all of it, but this is what we're talking about here, nine dimensional spin, finite reality, is astonishing in its implications. So let me give you a broad, relatively simple perspective of what is going on. Quantum mechanics. We know this is something very complicated in relation to theoretical physics and attempts at trying to explain this and also use it in research and experiments and in our everyday life. But it's not that simple because there are many different unexplained mysteries in quantum mechanics. So for example, we could talk about ideas pertaining to intrinsic spin. And in this regard, for example, when we look at electrons and we study them, we find that at times they appear and sometimes they seem to disappear. So this is a simple little mystery that goes on. Another mystery is something called the Kabibo mixing angle. Because it's such a strange angle. It varies minimally, but it is round about 13.04 degrees. And no one has ever been able to explain why this strange angle. Essentially, we cannot explain certain of these mysteries by applying the standard model of particle physics. In other words, at times, the standard model of reductionistic physics fails. And yet we tend to ignore it. We tend to say, well, we're sure that we will find explanations even when there are contradictions. We, that is, my colleague, mathematician and physicist, remarkable thinker in that regard, Dr. Edward Close, and myself, Dr. Vernon Neppe, propose that these empirical aspects of quantum physics relate to a much bigger picture and they may be understood if we conceive of some of our reality not being easily accessible to us, some of our reality being hidden and that actually when we look at the finite reality, we are talking about a nine-dimensional 
rotational model. Today we're going to focus on this idea of the Kabibo angle and how we can demonstrate that actually we can derive this angle mathematically if we use a nine-dimensional finite model. Not eight dimensions or ten dimensions, it has to be specifically nine. So let's begin with the historic challenge. It was February 2012 and Dr. Close and I had just come out with our book Reality Begins with Consciousness, a paradigm shift that works. This was the first edition. We now up to the fourth edition of this book because there have been so many extra elements we wanted to talk about. But the underlying axiom that space, time and consciousness are all separate. They all coexist, but not only do they coexist, they are tethered together from their origins that never are they separated. This underlying basic axiom has been sustained and been strengthened over this time. So, we wrote about this on a particular group and a very important astronomer said I don't believe that this can be so because I do not believe in a theory of everything. Well strangely enough we do not believe in a theory of everything either. We find the model not appropriate. We don't like that term theory of everything because physics uses it in one way and it's ambiguous and what does it really mean? So this astronomer pointed out that when we are able to demonstrate why the Kabibo angle is what it is, then he would take this TDVP, this triadic dimensional distinction vortical paradigm model that we had developed seriously. And I pointed out to him that this meta paradigm, in other words, this broader paradigm across several different areas of sciences applied to process, to procedure, and not to content. Therefore, this question was outside the scope. But we also said if the model was proved to be valid, it was possible that such content verification would come later. So here we have somebody challenging us and saying, prove it and use this content and then I will be able to understand. Because he knew that as of now, 2013, it's 50 years since Nicola Kabibo described this strange angle which thereafter bore his name. The strange size of a mixing angle of fermions, in this instance quarks. We knew there was no basis for it in the standard model of physics. It could not explain the Kabibo angle. And so we took up this challenge using our TDVP model, a nine-dimensional spin model. What does this mean? It means that our concept of reality radically changes because we have, as we know it, three dimensions of space, length, breadth, and height, and one moment in time, 
the present, even if it's a somewhat extended present. So it's not even one full dimension of time. And this was a concept developed by Hermann Minkowski. And Minkowski said, never again will space and time be separate. They're always one entity. And this has come to be known as the fourth dimension of which is time with the three dimensions of space, the four dimensions. In our model of TDVP, Triadic Dimensional Distinction Vortical Paradigm, we postulate nine dimensions, finite dimensions, and in addition, we say that there's a transfinite dimension. It's still discrete, but it's the tenth plus dimension. Very important concepts, these, because these are all discrete. In other words, they're little quanta that could be moved, as opposed to infinity where there's continuity. And within these nine plus dimensions, these are all vortical, they have spin, they have movement and some level of roundedness. Now imagine if we were able to demonstrate that in fact we have this nine-dimensional spin reality. It totally changes our perspective. So the so-called mixing angle in quarks it had been empirically derived. In other words, research had shown it was this angle, but nobody could ever establish why. It remained a scientific mystery. Could it be that by us directly applying our theory behind TDVP, we could justify the Kabibo angle? Now, the Kabibo angle is in quarks. Quarks are fermions, the elementary particles, so are electrons. And we appear to have solved this mystery. We've solved it applying this nine-dimensional finite spin model, applying the principles of TDVP to electrons. Very exciting finding. Now, ladies and gentlemen, yes, this finding of being able to mathematically derive the Kabibo mixing angle in fermions, in this instance, by rather complex calculations pertaining to the spinning of electrons specifically the electron of a hydrogen atom as a basic unit is indeed extraordinary. Dr. Edward Close, mathematician and physicist, and I were able to show that it is very close to that original 13.04 degrees. It's 13.032. The 13.04 incidentally had an error of 0.05. As emphasized, it could not be found with the standard model of physics, three dimensions of space, and one point in time. The four-dimensional idea, it just did not work. And this is why for 50 years, nobody had been able to solve this strange anomaly. It could not be solved in any other form, as an eight-dimensional model, or as a ten-dimensional model, or as a twelve-dimensional. It had to be nine dimensions, simply because the final mathematics, which is very simple because you derive one rotation and then just multiply, the final mathematics only is equivalent 
with nine dimensions. And this is very important, not because of the curiosity that these two scientists have now solved a mixing angle that is difficult even to locate in textbooks of theoretical physics. It is important, very important, profoundly so, because it suggests that our standard model of physics is incomplete, that we are dealing with a nine-dimensional spin reality, a reality that rotates over nine dimensions. We discuss some of these aspects in other YouTubes, but at least here you have a historical perspective, the challenge which we regarded as unfair because our TDVP model involved a process, a procedure, a paradigm, in fact a meta-paradigm across a variety of different ideas and sciences, the psychological, the consciousness, the physical and the biological and was translated mathematically as here by techniques such as dimensional extrapolation and calculus of distinctions. I wanted here to give you a broader idea of the nature of this discovery and why when we even examined content here in other words, content such as the Kabibo angle, we could still apply these fundamental principles in what may turn out to be a breakthrough discovery because there are many contradictions or unsolved conundrums in physics we may be able to apply the same kind of methodology in terms of spinning and rotation vortices across nine dimensions to solve some of these other unsolved problems. And we may be able to apply this to a wide variety of different areas such as consciousness research and ideas pertaining to extending space and time. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dr. Vernon Neppe, and it has been such a pleasure to have this opportunity to talk to you today.